Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is um, the units that we will use in this course. Uh, right now we talked about the scientific notation, so we already know how to work with numbers and the exponents and how they move back and forth, we know that. We know that those numbers may refer to different kinds of events, microscopic, atomic, we use the symbolic notation for that. Now let's let's remind ourselves what kind of what kind of units we're going to use um so first of all notice that uh, science is is an international language and as such it needs to come up with some standards and nothing more important in science than coming up with standards of units um of units so the since actually since the french revolution the the scientists came up with this idea of the metric system um the metric system is a set of units in this case, the unit of mass, the unit of length, the unit of time, temperature, electric current, etc., etc. Okay, um, and and those are, are fairly arbitrary units, but scientists need to decide which one they were going to use. Okay, um, notice that the metric system of for mass could be kilogram, it could be gram, it could be milligram. These are all units of mass that belong to the metric system. However, only one belongs to what it's called the SI unit. This one, only the kilo, is an SI unit of mass. SI comes from the French uh, Système International, in which uh, not only decide what scale of mass we're going to use, but we're deciding what unit is this the chosen one that we, that scientists are going to use to um, to express uh, some whatever quantity there they need to talk about. Okay, um, you are expected to remember the SI unit for mass, the SI unit for length, the SI unit for time, temperature, and that's it. Okay, we next semester in general chemistry two we will have to use electric current, but not yet. Oh, and I forgot. So not this one, not yet, but definitely the amount of substance, the mole. Okay, you expected to to know that. All right, so now we're going to talk about. Uh, what is the advantage of the uh, of the metric system? And as as opposed to the imperial system, the metric system is uh, can jump by units of ten. So, for example, one meter is ten to the negative one decameter. Uh, sorry, yes, that's correct. Um, and it's ten to the negative two hectometers, etc. Okay. Um, so, um, unlike the imperial system in which the ounces and pounds do not do not have a relationship of ten with each other, the metric system does. Okay, and it uses instead of carrying the exponential notation, sometimes instead of exponential notation, it uses prefixes, and you're expected to remember some of these prefixes. Definitely the kilo, the mega. Deci, centi, milli, micro, and nano. Um, these are you're expected to remember the the symbol, the prefix, and also the exponential notation. So let's let's practice a very simple exercise to see um, how how we can work with a metric system. So for example, if we have fifteen uh, a ballpoint pen of fifteen centimeters. And it's asking how long is this in meters? Notice that um, if we we have unit of two units of ten, right? Two powers of ten between centimeters and meters, and so this means that if we have to make it into centimeters, it will get smaller. So you could use fifteen times ten to the negative two. We said two powers of ten meters. Okay or if we are going to convert that 15 centimeters into micrometers, what's the distance between centimeters and micrometers? There is four units, four powers of 10, so, and in this case, it gets larger, so it's 10 to the four micrometers. Now, if this way of jumping up and down is a little confusing to you, that's fine. We have a more systematic way to do these conversions, which is called factor conversion, or also known as dimensional analysis. And that's what we're going to do in the next slide. And we're going to give you first an example from uh, not chemistry. Uh, so you have a pack of 10 pairs of socks that cost the pack three dollars. How much would two pairs of socks cost? That's called the factor conversion, in which you are you are given a, um, you're in, 
you write here what it's interested, what you're interested in convert, you apply the ratio, and that's the desired unit. How would you apply that in the sock example? So you're interested in no in converting pairs of socks, you have two pairs, and convert that into cost. So that would the pair is the given unit, the cost is the, is the desired unit. How can you express the ratio? So usually you will put the unit pair down here and the dollar up here and what is the ratio it says that 10 pairs cost three dollars okay so notice that pair and pair disappear that means you have six over ten dollars hopefully that makes sense okay this is called factor conversion um, and as we said the units cancel out um, and this is also called dimensional analysis. Notice that we are doing with, num with units the same that we're doing with numbers. We can multiply, we can add, we can divide units. Okay, so if you're multiplying units, you're going to get the same unit square. I'm down here. If you are adding units, you do not do anything with exponent of the unit. And if you're dividing the unit, so the unit will cancel out. So whatever the number comes out is uh, unitless. Okay, let's practice one more. Um, so, for example, let's convert 10 to the negative 3 kilos into milligrams. And we said we, we can use the, the powers of 10, that some students may find it confusing, so it's a fairly intuitive way, but it may not be. So let's say that this is the gram, this is the milligram, 1, 2, 3, and this is the kilogram. Each of these step of the ladder is unit of 10. Okay, now this may be um, a fairly intuitive way because if we're going from kilo to milligram, milligram is a much smaller uh, unit. What is the po how many powers of ten are there here between kilos and milligrams? If you count one, blah, 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 there's six. So there should be a difference of s six powers of ten. So you could say that ten to the negative three kilograms. I'm going to convert them into milligrams there should be 10 to the 3 milligrams. Now, um, but that's not using conversion factors. Let's use conversion factors, okay? Let's say we are giving, we're given this number and we want to convert it into milligram, okay? Um, now, what you may remember, however, is just the distance with between kilogram and gram and gram and milligram. So you may know you're going to put kilogram here, you're going to put here. You have to know that gram is a smaller unit, so there has to be more grams to make it equivalent. Okay, so with this I would convert kilograms into grams, and I can do another factor conversion in which grams are converted into milligrams. Again, the distance is 10 to the 3, 1 gram. What's the What's the result? Notice that kilo and kilo goes away, gram and gram goes away. What it's left over is just milligram. 10 to the negative 3 times 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 3 divided by 1. This is 10 to the 3 milligrams. So we're getting the same, um, the same result. Okay. Uh, you could do it differently. Uh, there's, there's a thousand and one ways of doing this. Uh, you could have come up directly with a factor conversion between kilograms and milligrams. Again, in this case, it's 10 to the 6 and 1. Okay, this goes away, and again, you're getting the same result. Okay, some students are confused because they they come up with a different kind of conversion. They would say, no, but I said, what I see is that one milligram is 10 to the negative six kilograms, which is also true. But notice that when you do this, 10 to the negative three divided by 10 to the negative six, you should still have the 10 to the three. Milligrams. So regardless how you do it, please practice, it's important. But notice that there's an intuitive conversion going up and down here um, in terms of that every, every, each step is a, a unit of 10. Uh, that's it.